Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you're learning so far. Remember to also subscribe on the Daily Torah channel if you're not already a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button and you can leave comments in the comments section below also. Today we are on day four of this week's Daily Torah series called Kukat. Yesterday we discussed the children of Israel arriving at Mount Hor and the death of Aaron. Today our Torah portion continues with the children of Israel again complaining and God sending fiery serpents in response. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Numbers chapter 21, beginning in verse 4. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 4, we read, Then they journeyed, I'm sorry, then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. In verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live so Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now, my friends, again, they had to go far out of their way because the Edomites refused them passage. And to go around the Edomites, they had to turn back towards the wilderness and away from Canaan. No wonder the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And this was a discouraging situation, but it was also an opportunity to trust God. The same God who just gave them victory at Hormah and provided all their needs would also guide them through this setback. It's the same with us, right, my friends? Sometimes we have victories and then we have setbacks. Do we lose hope in God? Do we start complaining and whining to him, forgetting what he just delivered us out of previously? You know, Israel's new generation sounded like the old generation that died in the wilderness. If they continued in the steps of their fathers, the new generation would no more able to conquer Canaan than the previous generation was. One might say, that in these early challenges, the new generation's behavior was worse than their fathers. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. There was a connection between their despising of manna and these fiery poisonous snakes. They despised the bread from heaven, so God gave them serpents from the earth. They despised God's blessings, so God gave them burning poison. They despised the life God sustained for them, and God gave them death. These came from God to get the nation's attention at this critical place in their journey to Canaan. If they continued in the unbelief of the previous verses, they would never take the land. Probably most of these victims were of the older generation of unbelief. This was God's final way of fulfilling his promise that they would perish in the wilderness and not enter his promised land. Are we any better, my friends? When we have a victory and a setback follows, 
Do we forget what God has done for us and start losing faith and complaining against him, not trusting him to deliver us and to guide us as he did in the past? Does he need to send fiery serpents into our lives to get us to repent and obey and trust in him? He wants the best for us, but he's not going to force us to trust him. He's not going to force us to obey him, but he wants us to do so, and he will do whatever is necessary to get our attention so that we will repent and trust and obey him. Now let's review our half Torah portion for today in Judges chapter 11, verses 19 through 22. In Judges 11, verse 19, we read, Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon. And Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land into our place. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory, so Sihon gathered all his people together and camped in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. Thus Israel gained possession of all the land of the Amorites, who inhabited the country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. Now here, my friends, Japheth or Jephthah, I mean, is reminding the king of the Ammonites from our conversation yesterday that the Amorites conquered the Ammonites and took control of their land. When Israel defeated the Amorites in battle, they justly took the land of the Amorites, which also happened to be the previous land of the Ammonites. The war against the Amorites was prompted by the vicious Amorite war against Israeli civilians. Jephthah argued that since God gave this land to Israel, the Ammonites had no claim over it. Now, tomorrow we're going to continue with this history and why the Ammonites or anyone has no claim to the land then and has no claim to the land today. What God has given Israel, no one has a right to take it back. God gives to to his people what he wants to give them and he gave Israel this land. Now let's look at our Brit Hadashah portion for today in John chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. In John 3, verse 17, we read, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. My friends, Yeshua revealed the heart of God the Father in sending the Son to bring salvation, rescue, hope, healing to the world through him. Now some will in fact be condemned, and that as the result of Messiah's coming into the world. But the purpose of his coming was not this condemnation. Each of us has a choice to choose life or death, to choose the Messiah or to not choose him, to believe or not to believe. John 3.16 is the most gracious, wonderful offer conceivable, eternal life for all who believe. Yet the offer has inherent consequences for anyone who reject, who refuse to believe. The refusal makes their condemnation certain. Yeshua came to bring salvation, but those who reject that salvation condemn themselves. The responsibility is ours alone. Those who have not heard the word will have a chance to hear it at his return and to also make that same choice. 
If you haven't listened to our series, God's Plan for Humanity on the Daily Torah channel, please take some time to go through that series. Everyone, my friends, born will have a choice to make, to choose life or death, eternal light or eternal darkness. My friends, what have you chosen? What will you choose? Are you choosing life or death? So let's end it here for today. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Go back and read John 3, 16 through 18. Pray for us in this message to go out. Pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah and their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes. Download the daily tour schedule. You can also order some of our books there. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber so you never miss a single episode. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or the donate button on the website. Tomorrow we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings, and Shalom, my friends.